You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and we are back on our next episode of the SpongeBob Underwater Electronic Aquarium. And I've added a few items here because as I look at it, I think hmm, maybe I want to make some changes. Not sure why I have some train track out here and a Lincoln log, and I'll show you that. I do have some more shelf liner I need to get ready because I decided on the sides. I wanted to cover those in black to keep the lighting in. And then we're going to add our robo fish to the tank this time. And then at the pet shop, because I thought, hmm, on sale clearance, 99 cents, 99 cents, 99 cents. And this was a dollar something for just a piece of coral. Not sure how it's going to work, but we'll check it out. And then I wanted to add a little more light with a bubble feature. So this is an air stone. Of course, then I needed a pump. So this is actually getting bigger than I had originally anticipated. But now we'll have a little action with bubbles. Why not? SpongeBob loves bubbles. So I have the tubing. I also have a check valve, which I need to install. So lots to do. First thing I think I want to do is do this black paper here and cover it with my shelf liner. And uh, that's what I'm going to do when I come back. So I've done this for you before, but I wanted to just do one side. The other side is done. I just did one side with this, and then I taped it all the way around with my clear tape to kind of seal it in. So you've seen me do this, but I will do it one more time for you because I kind of want to keep you involved with the process as much as possible. So remember, I just peel it off on one end. Okay. Uh, let's see, maybe easier to do it this way. And then I got to start it on my table. And I try to get it as straight as possible to start. Okay. I just did this. And then I moved across and down. Okay, and I keep pushing it down, pushing it down like that. Until it went all the way to the end. There you go. And that's just to protect it. And let me just peel it. Now that will not come off. Once it's on that paper, it's on. So you can do that to any paper you want, really. Just be patient. You have to take your time with it. You don't want to peel it too fast. Alright, so that one's set. What I need to do now is I want to get the pump set up. So I'm going to show you that set up when I come back. There. It's good to go. Pump next. All right, here we go. Now this is the pump and the air stone light. I wanted to add some light and a bubbling feature just so that it adds a little more dimension to the tank. So I actually had this pre-measured. Have this ready. This is called the check valve. So you cut the tubing and you make sure that that valve goes with the arrow pointing away from the air pump. So I have it pre-measured where this one goes into here. Okay, so that's set. And away from the air pump. What happens is this will stop water from going back out the tank and flood your floor. So that goes there. This goes here. And this goes over the tank and into the feature here. Let me plug this in. I'll show you what it does. Okay, so there's LED lights here. So watch when I plug it in. Look at that. So that will have bubbles coming up and then light it as it goes. So I was thinking about putting that in Squidward's place so that the bubbles come through the eyes. That might look pretty cool. So that is the next thing. Now let's check out the Robofish. Alright, so here's the new introduction to the tank today. This is the RoboFish, my pet fish, and it looks like I have to put the batteries in, but it's water-activated swim sensors. It's a Zuru toy. Let's just see, collect them all. We have the clownfish, swims like a real fish, lifelike tail, fin motion, water-activated swimming mechanism. And that's really it. Let's, let's get in here and check it out, huh? Let's see. Now we've had requests for RoboFish, so that's why I thought the tank itself would be fun so that we can introduce different ooh, 
He's moving. I have no idea why. Look at him. He just started flipping. So does it have batteries in it already? And then those are, oh yeah, there are batteries in there. Okay, let's see if there's instructions. It's like a fish out of water. You get a separate set of batteries, but no other instructions. So it looks like you just put them in the water. I'm not, I'm not sure these are the sensors right here that when they touch the water, they have them start swimming. All right, he's set to go. So now let me show you what I'm going to do with the track and the Lincoln Log. All right, so I was rechecking out SpongeBob's neighborhood and realized that he's got that gray sidewalk. It's kind of like got cobblestone in it and had to figure something out for that. I had some extra pieces of this track for a Thomas set. And this is 2004 Thomas Limited. So I don't like destroying toys, but I needed it. So I am going to take this to this and this to this. I need to cut this off here, which I will do. And then this goes to Patrick's house. Okay, so I pre-cut this already. And then this, I cut on a little angle so it'll sit like this to SpongeBob's house. And then I needed a couple logs in here to get to Squidward's house. So I'm just going to probably, maybe two, I think there's three or four in the actual scene. So I'm going to actually cut this off camera. You'll hear it, but a lot of people don't like cutting in sharp objects. So I'm here. I'm just using a basic hacksaw. Okay. So now this will end. If you look at the scene of SpongeBob's place, you'll see it kind of just goes off. And then I need to cut a couple of these, probably as wide as that. So I'm going to cut it here. You'll hear it. These are just Lincoln logs. I had a set incomplete. Same with that track set. The only thing I'm not sure of is if this is going to float or I can bury it enough or it stays in the sand. I don't know. There's so much stuff moving while I'm cutting. That'll look like that, like a little walkway. And let me make one more. I'll use this for my length. All right, I'll mark it and then cut it. So what I'm gonna do now is come back. Oh, I gotta show you the plants. So I'll get those out of the packaging. Now, he doesn't really have a lot of plants around the place, but I wanted to add a little more dimension. You know, in a fish tank, you gotta have dimension and a little more color to kind of brighten up the whole scene. Wow. Harder to cut than I thought it would be to cut. Not the best saw, actually, I cut wood. I have all kinds of power tools, but this is just for ease of the video. So I think two will meet the dimension here, see? So that's kind of like the walkway. All right, so when I come back, let's uh, take a quick look at the plants. All right, so the first place I went when I went to that fish store, actually that same day I started the video, I'm like, I gotta get more stuff, was the clearance. And in the clearance, 99 cents, which is really good for plants. And this is like a dollar something. So let's just take a quick look at it. I was just hoping to add that color to brighten up my little scene, right? Now, of course, I'm not extremely accurate here. It's hard to be exactly accurate. All right, then here's the next one. And then this coral, so like a dollar ninety-nine or something like that on clearance. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it, but I thought, hmm, a little more dimension. I'll leave the tag on just in case I have to return it, but I just wanted to show it to you. So that's everything going into the tank today. So let's move over to the tank and we'll start setting it up. All right, so I don't know if you see my hand up here on the right side, the left side I already did. So I'm using that same tape that I used last time. This is actually called clear duct tape if you wanna try to find it. And I'm just running a piece along the top. 
So in a second, that whole side is going to be sealed off. So I'll put it on this here, and then right under here, once I'm in, I'll know. And then you'll kind of see that my hands are no longer being seen. They're lining up just right. Okay, there we go. So that will seal that in, and then I'll tape the side. And the reason I'm doing this, there's a good reason why I'm doing this, is because I have a surprise for you today. So now it's taped all the way around except for the bottom edge, which I'll do last. And now it's completely sealed. So many issues with water now. All right, I know you're wondering what I'm doing. It's hard to see, but at least you're hearing tape and things are happening. All right, so that's set. Let's look inside the tape now and do the next thing. All right, so here we go. As you can see, not much has changed. I kind of reset some things up after I moved some stuff around. I picked up Gary. He fell over, so he's good now. He might not stay there, and SpongeBob probably won't stay there because I've got to get their sidewalk in. So what I want to do is get this water feature under Squidward's hut, but I want to see how it fits. Okay, that's not the best one, so maybe I'll put it under SpongeBob's. Place. I know Spongebob doesn't have a bubbly house, but why not? It looks like it'll fit. Yes, it looks like I can put it under Spongebob. So let me move it over to the side here. Put it in the ground. Kind of bury it just a little. Okay. And then put SpongeBob's house back over it. Should stay. All right. Looks like I got some weight on there. That's set. Let me put Squidward's house back. All right. So let me get that plugged in, and then we'll see what it looks like when it's bubbling. All right. There you go. I would say that's pretty cool. I had to make some jellyfish changes. The other jellyfish was too short, so I moved the blue one. This one over here. See my finger closer and Gary he's still there he's gonna stay there it looks like and it's pretty neat I like the way it bubbles through Spongebob's uh, opening in the back of his pineapple I might move it to Squidward's I thought originally Squidward would be the coolest one with the blue and the eyes so maybe next time I'll move it over there so what I need to do now is oh yeah by the way one thing I probably would have changed is the background if you're gonna do a background like this get some neon paints and kinda go over the effects there with neon I think that would add a cool dimension to it. So let me get this sidewalk in. Remember this? This is going to go, I'm going to have to, well, let me see. So this is going to add now a little pathway. Oop, Sandy's going to have to move, so we're going to have to find a new spot for her. And then there's my floating sidewalk. I wanted that right up to the glass and it kind of tucked in here so that it looks like it's you know, now part of the scene. So it goes over there. And then this other piece goes to Spoke. I'm going to have to move SpongeBob. Let's move him here. He looks happy now with the bubbles. So that connects to his house. Okay, so a little sidewalk now. I'll give you another perspective. And then, not too sure about Squidward's steps, but we'll put them in. Not sure if they'll stay. I might have to add weights. Well, they do stay. Probably not stay too long. They'll probably float away. They're hard to see, but that's just the way it is. Move them over. Move him over here. Oopsie. So maybe when they get waterlogged, they'll stay in better. I was thinking I might have to add weights or little sinkers to them. Okay, so now his two steps are set. Let me give you a, a better perspective of that. Oops. Yeah, there you go. Well, it was the thought that counted. I have an idea how to fix that, but I'll have to do that another time. So let me give you another look at it. All right, I know it's a little cloudy right now, but uh, after today, I don't think I'll be doing much more aquascaping. But now you see the sidewalk. Now let me take a plan here. 
I think I need a little color back here. Oop, sorry, Plankton. And then let me put one back here. See, it kind of adds color and dimension. And then I might put one right in front of the sidewalk right here, just in this corner. Kind of adds a little dimension there. Okay, everything is in. So when I come back, I think I got it. I don't think I'm going to put that big piece of coral in. When I come back, I'm going to put my uh, jellyfish back in and my new robofish. All right, so back to my jellyfish. Hopefully they turn on. Ooh, he's on. You've seen them before. I'm waiting for Squidward Sidewalk to pop up. Okay. And now my new robofish into his tank. Let's see. Ooh, he's swimming. Here he goes. All right, let's watch that for a little bit. Oh, look, he's going all over. These sometimes need to be tapped a little bit more. All right, so what I'm going to do is reset up my lighting, come back, and then uh, I'll let it run a little bit. Well, there it is. Look at him. Oh, he hopped right in front. Now my jellyfish are not moving around too good. I think I might have to put new batteries in. I'm just going to leave them because right now it's about my robofish, and he's moving around really good. So I think overall I'm happy with it. Like I said, I might change the background. That'll take some work. It's an option. Uh, but for now, the exciting thing I wanted to show you here, I will start it now. It's coming in. Look, it is a GoPro camera that I can move underwater. So right now I'm going to switch over to the GoPro. All right, here we are in our underwater world. Let me take you over to Spongebob. Say hi to Spongebob. He's hanging out. And look inside his little bubble house. So that's what that looks like back there. You have your plant that I put in. And Sandy. Ooh, there's Sandy right there in front of us. And Squidward. Looking pretty happy. There's his house. He's got a jellyfish stuck. And then over to Patrick. There's Patrick. And Mr. Krabs, I'm not sure if you can see him. And then back here is Plankton. Can you see Plankton? Oh, I just hit Patrick in the head. Not sure, I can't see the screen, so I don't know. So there you go. All right, I will switch back to the other camera right now. All right, there you go. I think I'm just going to let it run like I did for a few minutes, and we'll see what happens to RoboFish. If you hear me or see me walking in the background, because I want to try to activate some things, and they just don't want to activate these guys. They're supposed to. Maybe they need fresh batteries. So let me take two of them out, and I'll go work on those while you watch. All right, I am set now. I've got batteries and everything. The other batteries weren't too bad, but... Maybe just uh, replacing them helped a little. This guy was working a second ago. Let's see. Oh, there he is. All right, so now I'm going to let it go and give you about two minutes, three minutes, I don't know, four minutes. At this point, why not just let it run so you can see what happens and watch my robofish swim around and see what my jellyfish do. I'm hoping, too, that the fish also bump into the jellyfish and activate them a little bit more. So if you see me come by once in a while and knock them down, that's just to reset them. So enjoy the rest of the video, and thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Next time, it should be much cleaner and easier to see inside. And from here on out, I think it's just adding fish and doing other fun stuff. So enjoy the video.
If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up. Thanks for watching.